Hello, hello, hello. It's so good to be back here in the uh, pastoral uh, Bible study fellowship and uh, just uh, enjoying the time we're spending this month uh, as we are getting through the uh, 14th chapter of Zechariah, able to read last week verses 1 through 11. Isn't that something? And there are only 21 <laughs> verses to this section. Now, we haven't done any verse-by-verse verse stuff yet. So as you can tell, when we go back and do that, it may be a little longer. But at least we can get just these uh, today and what we did in the previous weeks done. Maybe we can get through the uh, various major sections of chapter 14 and get ready to do the verse-by-verse verse, uh, look at the truth. Tonight's uh, objective is to um, engage the truth about the rapture when Jesus comes back to gather the church out of the world and then to get introduced the parts of scripture that deal with his second coming when he touches down to the earth. Uh, we tried last week to be very clear in telling us that when he raptures the church, we are called up. Jesus does not touch down. But when he comes back the second time as king, protector, and punisher, his feet are on the ground. So I want to make sure that the body of Christ, at least the people who I'm responsible for giving biblical insight and understanding, understand the difference between the rapture and the second coming of our Lord. So let's pray, and we'll get right to uh, diving into this wonderful truth about the rapture primarily then introducing the second coming uh, in the context that we have let's pray god we thank you tonight for uh, superintending the activities of this day and we thank you for life health and strength thank you for food for clothing and shelter and for our right minds and so now again i pray that you steal us from the activities of our busyness, that we may hear you with our hearts so that we may live out the truth in our feet, in our behavior, words, and actions. We give you glory for it, for it's done in your name. Amen. Flowers fade, grass withers, but the word of our God endures forever. All right, so if you would open your Bibles to, again, Zechariah chapter 14, and if you would reread verses 1 through 11, uh, you would see the truth that is there. Our primary text for the evening is going to be 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, all right? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 is going to be our primary text of the evening. Also, please be reminded that there are discussion and reflection questions that you can uh uh, download and you can use throughout the week if that is your desire you want to go deeper in examining what we share and what we talk about here uh, between the various Tuesday evening sessions that we meet also remember Pastor Joe is uh, engaged now in a in-person Bible study and that's every second and fourth Wednesday nights. I forgot the time on that. Um, what's my hand signal on that? Um, uh, 7 p.m. Oh, God help me. <laughs> Pastor Joe gonna kill me. Uh, 7 p.m. So I uh, remember he's here. Um, uh, uh, primary focus with our young people, millenniums, etc. But if you are whatever young at heart, you just say, I, I, I've been in the house, I need to get out. I'm sure you will be thoroughly blessed by the teaching ministry of Pastor Joseph C. Manaway. And then on the first Wednesday nights only at 7 p.m., uh, we only have one small group online now, and it's led by Dr. Heather Clark. It is a small group. Uh, being taught on um, the Christian living a minimalist lifestyle. So check it out. Uh, the uh, course descriptions about what's going on uh, should be up online. Since this is the 19th, I'm sure that they have all of those wonderful things there for you, flyers giving you instructions about how you can be engaged and how you can be a part of those activities. 
And then finally, before I get into it tonight, I am hopeful also, even as I'm speaking, that our new church website launch is up and going. Pastor Joseph uh, has been working real hard uh, with this part of our ministry. I am so pleased at the uh, peaky loos I've been able to look at. So we're looking forward to launching the new website of the Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church. Those are just a few things that are going on here. Please be a part of. Also remember, we are in the middle of Lent. In the middle of Lent. Uh, just a month and about five days um, in. So that, that means uh, we have uh, uh, just a little under 20 some odd days that are left in Lent celebrations 2024. I hope you have been listening to God, hearing what God has been saying to you. And let me thank again publicly the members of the Tabernacle Baptist Church and her leaders who have been so uh, humble and committed in doing things during Lent for others and observing those precepts of Isaiah chapter 58 verses 1 through 8. And we invite you to be a part of what we're doing here at Tabernacle. So please uh, visit our Facebook page, our YouTube page, our Instagram, and see what God may say to you as far as you getting involved in sharing in ministry here. So let's pray and we'll get right to the discussion of trying to help us understand the blessing and joy of the rapture and hopefully introduce the second coming with Jesus touched down for the second time as protector and punisher. Let us pray. God bless us now and give us strength to do what's right. We ask in your name. Amen. All right. So some call the rapture a concept. And when I'm teaching or the Bible or whatever, I I, I, y'all pray for me. I, I, I guess I'm just not that sophisticated or self-willed or whatever, but the concept to me, I, I like to say the, the truth or that is teaching or the principle that is teaching, the, the lesson, the illustration it is giving. So the rapture comes from um, the interpretations of scripture that are in full view and in line with Paul, the Apostle Paul's teaching to the church at Thessalonica. And it is a beautiful passage. Now we're just dealing with verses 16 and 17, but look, it's not a long chapter, not a long book. So if you want to just go back and read the entire book of 1 Thessalonians, so that by the time you get to chapter four, verses 16 and 17, these primary texts, you will have a good general overview of what Paul has been saying, arguing with the, the, the believers there. But it reads, For the Lord himself shall come down from heaven. Ah, it's hard to get past that, Paul Metellus. For the Lord himself shall come down, not sending Gabriel. <laughs> this is not a this is not a task for Sinclair. This is not a, ta this is not a task for Michael uh, uh, and, and in other faiths. This is not a job for Raphael, though some, some call the four main angels of heaven. No, this is when the Lord himself comes down from heaven. He comes with a loud shout, says the, the King James Version. Here in the ESV it says, a loud command with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. Boy, that's some noise. A loud voice plus a trumpet. Ooh, what an announcement. Mm. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so we will be with the Lord forever. Mm. Can we just look at that again, the rapture? Remember, his feet are not gonna touch the earth when he comes back to rapture the church, the believers. Ah, God, 
All those who've died in Christ up until the time he comes to rapture. Those who've been sleeping in the grave. The, ha, those who've been resting for millennia are going to be called up first. The dead in Christ, the dead believing, the dead faithful will be called up first. And then those of us who are alive and remain after they have been called, we're also going to be called up together with them. One record says we shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Bam. Bam. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So in simple terms then, dear hearts, the, uh, the rapture is um, this event where Christians, <laughs> both uh, the living and the dead, will be taken up into the air to meet Jesus when he returns for the church. He's coming back for the church. Wow. Remember Caesarea Philippi? Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. It's going to endure. Right? Remember Paul to the church, Christians at Ephesus called the church the bride of Christ. Oh, the one adorned for her groom, the church, the individual, the corporate, the universal body of Christ, visible and invisible, who placed their full trust in the Savitic atoning work of Jesus Christ is sacrificial death on the cross, paying the ultimate price for the wrath God had against sin. Those people who believe that, uh-huh, uh-huh, not, not my mama's belief, not my daddy's, my sister, my brother. No, 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 no. This is says every knee that has bowed, every tongue that has confessed that Jesus is Lord, that, that, that people, those who have trusted no other font but Jesus Christ, right, have depended on nothing but his blood to cover, save, and redeem, cleanse, to sanctify the church. Mm-hmm. Going to be taken up when Jesus comes back again. Gathered together to be with the Lord for eternity. Now you just going to shout right there. So we haven't even got to the battle of, of, of Armageddon's and all, all that kind of stuff yet. We just, oh, oh, <laughs> we, we just waiting to go to the place the Lord has prepared for us all this time. And every time I talk about that, Pastor Joseph, I always say, what kind of place this must be? That all this time, now we know we're talking, you know, metaphorically and symbolically. God can speak and things can be, but it's just the idea that if we use our, our human finiteness, you know, uh, that, 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 that we just find ourselves not able to grasp hold of the, um, the infinity of God, you know, and, and his power, his sovereignty, and his might. Nobody counsels him. He doesn't ask anybody's permission to do what he does. He can just speak and worlds start turning. But the idea that he would prepare a place intentionally and then that he would give time for sinners to accept salvation so heaven can be populated. Oh, my God. Thank you, Peter. It is not God's will that anyone should perish, but that all men should come to repentance. He's waiting. If, if, if you are not a believer tonight, if you're a backslider, if you need to be, come on, come on, y'all. Gather together to be with him for eternity. Imaging. Imaging is everything. So, for a moment, try to imagine this, okay? When Jesus returns, there will be a loud shout. <laughs> the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. Uh, it's not been that long, but maybe a month ago, Pastor Joseph and I, we were riding uh, somewhere and, and he recalled the day that here in the Pacific Northwest, there was a breach of airspace 
uh, with the president coming in some plane had got in airspace and they scrambled these jets from uh, Oregon and these fighter jets went up and they went from zero to mark whatever and there was a sonic And our people were so startled by the boom, by jets breaking uh, the sound barrier, by a boom going off, thunder, and men were closing doors, wondering what was going on. That may have been one of the low-level examples of, for some, the fright and the joy that may be experienced when this trump of God sounds. Uh, who's ever heard the trumpet of God? <laughs> what is this voice of this archangel? Y'all, I'm just trying to say, what an announcement. Isn't that something? What an announcement of the Lord coming together, the church. And at the moment of the sound of the trumpet and the voice of the archangel, all the people who have died believing in Jesus will rise from their graves first. Ah, here in the Pacific Northwest, and I, probably where you are in the country, you have your favorite uh, cemeteries or places of interment. Can you imagine, uh, for those who are in the Northwest, all of the properties of Wash Shelley, graves just being open, Washington Park, Sunset Hills. Are y'all with me here? Aurora Avenue, Washington Park, down by SeaTac Airport. Can, can you imagine all these places? Mount Olivet over there in uh, Renton, Kent. All these places is opening up. I, I, I did Mount Tahoma, the, the cemetery place. All those things, graves opening up, and people who died in Christ being called out and caught up. Those who are still alive and rem alive and believe in Jesus then will be taken up into the sky to meet Jesus. What a reunion. Oh, pa Pastor Joe, can you see that man? The dead who were in him first. They literally, um, for application's sake, get to see those of us who kept holding on. <laughs> you know, I'm just holding on, I'm just holding on, holding to my faith. <laughs> they got just to celebrate seeing us come up after them. What a, what a picture that God so honors those who endured faith first, those who endured persecution first, those who embed their burdens first, those who endured persecution and hardships first, they come up. Then those of us who've been enduring, we're caught up to be with them. And this will happen suddenly. How fast is the twinkling of an eye, says the King James Version of the Bible. Twinkling of an eye. Wow. I can hardly feel when I, when I blink. In the twinkling of an eye, suddenly, and those who are taken up will be with Jesus forever. All right. Got about five minutes, so let's start introducing now these various schools of thought that surround uh, the rapture. Isn't it amazing? Uh, uh, Dr. Claiborne Lee, that every time we get a biblical truth and, and something that we ought to be shouting about and celebrating, all of a sudden we get all the different versions of how it's going to be and what's going to take place. So first of all, there is something called people, some people believe, some Christians, some believers believe that this rapture event we have a perspective of pre-tribulation. We call them pre-trips. They believe in pre-tribulation. So the view holds that um, the rapture of the church will occur before a period of tribulation on earth, during which time God will pour out his judgment and believers will be caught up to be with Jesus before this time of great tribulations. So before God pulls out his wrath, God is going to rapture the church out. There is also those who are called themselves mid-tribulation raptures. They believe in a mid-tribulation. 
This view of the rapture suggests that the rapture will take place in the middle of the tribulation period, which is typically seen as a seven year period of intense turmoil and judgment described in the book of Revelation. So there's pre-trip, there's mid-trip. Then there are those who believe in post-tribulation rapture. And according to this perspective, the rapture of the church will happen after the tribulation period is over. Believers will go through the tribulation but will be taken up to meet Jesus at his second coming, which will occur at the end of the tribulation period. Can you hear that? You, you can already hear if you're a good Bible study student, you do any type of theological exegesis and the, the uh, what's, what's it called, uh, Pastor H.B. Charles, the mention of first things. Got it? So there's, there's pre-trip, there's mid-trip, there's post-tribulation uh, perspective. And then there is a pre-wrath, W-R-A-T-H, tribulation thought. This view holds that the rapture will occur before the final outpouring of God's wrath upon the earth, which is seen as distinct from the tribulation period. Believers in this particular perspective will be taken up before this time of intense judgment. And then finally, there is a partial rapture. Some have a perspective that there will be a partial rapture. This perspective suggests that only certain believers who are spiritually prepared and living faithfully will be raptured, while the others will remain on earth to go through the tribulation period. Can you see it? Different views of the same event, five of them. Once again, pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, post-tribulation, pre-wrath, rapture, and partial rapture perspectives. And these different views on the timing and the manner are based on the various teachings. Some say, some say, and we got the same Bible, from Revelation, some say from Daniel, some even try to say some of the words of Christ like Matthew chapter 24 once again. So how can each of these have the basis of scriptural thought? Well, I like that, so let's go back now and real quickly, just let me talk about the pre-tribulation rapture theory. That's where, not theory, oh my God, belief, teaching. That's the one we're talking about here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. When the Lord himself comes down, that's Paul teaching. Paul is teaching that before anything jump off, tribulation or wrath, God is going to usher the church to eternity. Let's stop there because we got to deal with the other ones in the scripture context next week, God willing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be always upon you. Experience the Lord's peace. Until then, amen, good evening, and shalom.